Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. This is part 5 of Ambushville. Today we're going to be playing my entry Lost at Sea. And because it's my entry we're going to do things a little bit differently in this video as obviously I can go into a lot more depth about how the map was created and what the goals were and all of that good stuff. So this is going to be more of an analysis video more than just a gameplay video. So if gameplay is more your thing, feel free to skip ahead to another one of the videos. This is going to be more of a level design focused vid. So, as I'm doing it live here, I'm just going to have to turn on all the cheats. Let's see, what do I want? Let's have God and no clip. Perfect. So, this is the final version, obviously, that, was, that you've all played by now, I hope. And it's far from perfect. There are a lot of things that I wanted to do with this map and just didn't have the time for. Uh, a lot of things that really bothered me that I didn't have time to do and a few things which would have been nice but were cut due to time constraints. But overall I'm pretty happy with the way the map turned out. I'm really happy with the theme. Uh, theme is something that I think is critically important in maps. Uh, Certainly for myself, I, I don't want to speak for everyone here, but for me, if I'm not excited about the location I'm building, then that really, really hurts my uh, enthousi en enthusiasm for actually finishing the project. And I was so, so happy when I found the uh, photo reference for building this level. I'll chuck it up on the screen here for you guys. There's also an article on Lambda Generation about me building this map, which shows the image as well. It's an image of a sea fort. I think it's in Ukraine somewhere. It's used for kind of loading and unloading warships, I think, and it was abandoned due to uh, bad weather in the area, kind of flooding the thing. Apparently there were waves that were just crashing over the top of the entire thing during storms, so they gave up on it. And I thought that was a great thing for an ambush, as because it's kind of a very sol solitary environment out at sea, it has this mysterious quality where no one really knows what would be out there. Uh, I think at a lot of locations people kind of expect there to be something there because it's something they can relate to, especially if it's like a real world location like a city or a town or you know anything like that. People have certain expectations but something out in the middle of nowhere like this that's really tough to get to for the average human being, I think you have a lot more creative license about what you can get away with and people tend to kind of give up a lot more with what they expect from the level. And you get to do cool stuff like this and add, obviously adding all the combine stuff was a lot of fun here. Uh, I wanted to go a little bit further actually, I wanted to kind of have half the island be this old kind of disused fortification and the other half be kind of repurposed for combine use but never really got around to finishing that so it's just kind of a little bit of combine technology kind of scattered all over the place. Uh, over here is actually where I got the furthest along with it. There was originally going to be uh, some gameplay inside this area where there's going to be like a, some kind of device or a puzzle in here in order to open up a further route. In fact originally if I remember correctly before I added in all this gameplay here, the player was going to come up this side of the building and actually come in here. There was going to be a large walkway coming out of this side and going into a building I was going to place here. Never actually got around to doing that though. So this, this ends up just being a little bit of eye candy. This building really does catch the uh, cube maps, which turned out amazing in this map. And that's something else. Cube maps are currently broken in a Half-Life 2. When you build them they don't actually apply to the level. You have to use a third-party utility to go into the BSP and delete the uh, and delete the pre-generated cube maps from the BSP file and then run cube maps again after you've done that in order for them to apply like this. But as you can see here, especially on these combined wall panels, they really come to life with the cube maps. You get a nice reflection from the buildings as the lighting's really strong there. It looks really, really nice. I was very, very happy with that. The level actually looked quite dull, I think, without these cube maps. It really helps to bring it to life like this. Okay, so let's get started here. 
So that's a bit of an intro. I'm sorry if I babble on a little bit, but I just want to make sure I cover everything. And so the main goal I had with this is, as it's out in the middle of nowhere, kind of this giant fortification, it would feel really weird if I kind of blocked player movement, because it's just sea all around you. So it felt it would feel very, very strange if I put all these kind of strange blocks in the way that you couldn't progress around. So I had to kind of design that into the level. And that's something I always really, really like to do with maps is make sure that if you're making an open environment like this to give the player some choices about where to go. So to start off here, I suppose the intro is something else I can talk about that originally I wanted the player to come in on a little wooden boat or something and then just have it break kind of about here perhaps then have them jump onto the uh, side of the island there. Of course it, it was all cut due to time constraints so I ended up just spawning the player up here which was a little bit of a rush job as uh, the player can actually move around while the screen is faded to black. <laughs> Not that you can really get yourself in any trouble unless you start drowning but yeah. You really want to make sure the player can't move when they don't have, when they can't actually see the environment yet. So th th there are a couple of oversights like that in the map it's just m more time than anything else, I just didn't have time to fix a lot of these things. So let's talk about the water first, as uh, it contains a couple of easter eggs, and uh, I suppose I am going to spoil them in this video as I want to cover everything. But I thought, as there's going to be a lot of water in the map, I want to make it interesting to kind of explore around down there. And uh, originally there was going to be some gameplay involving like underwater tunnels in the map. Well, I'll talk more about that later on, but there was originally going to be like a tunnel system under the fort that you could go into. I was going to devise some kind of like air pockets and things like that so you can go and explore around down there. But again, mainly due to time, I didn't have, a, didn't have time to finish any of that. So it just ends up being a couple of remnants on it. So if we go and have a look and come down here, there's a tunnel here. Can't get into it, but there's some... Uh, supplies hidden underneath that you can grab. You'll notice actually, that's probably something worth talking about, is that the water brushes in Half-Life 2 do not block light by themselves, so originally this underwater section was full of the, uh, the sunset light and it looked really really awful. Uh, water in Half-Life 2 it's a tricky thing because I'd love to do more of it in maps, but because of things like the fog distance underwater and the way the light works underwater, it, it doesn't really work that well. So what I had to do was, I just put a giant light blocker brush kind of just under the surface here, so you can see the sunlight kind of fades out when it gets to about here, that's where the brush starts. So you get a little bit of light leaking through the surface and then it just kind of stops, and then I added a a, a blue light under the water, kind of a, a br I think it's about brightness 12 or 15, uh, blue omni light back here somewhere so it kind of shines onto everything underwater so it's not completely pitch black. Unfortunately this led to a couple of errors as you can see this uh, this prop here is actually lit with blue light rather than the, uh, the sunset light. Again this could be fixed with uh, info lighting entities but this only reared its head on the final compile I did. You can see there's a couple of other props here which aren't quite lit properly. So yeah, that's why that happened. And uh, originally, when the level was being beta tested, I noticed that barely any of the players actually went into the water. In fact, some of the players actually tried to actively avoid going into the water. They felt it was dangerous. So I tried to add just a couple of visual landmarks in the water which might spur players to explore down there. The first one was the arrow there. So it's actually a breakable prop. You can run over it with the airboat and it'll smash. But it's kind of like an arrow, which is why I chose it, and I just wanted something in the water that perhaps get players to search around in there. There's also a, a structure underneath the water on the combine lookout post, which you can explore around. But yeah, I just tried to add a couple of things. Actually, if I no clip, be quicker. There's a couple of things out here as well. There's some rocks. There's a submerged boat here. I think that'll probably get the most attention from players. Some other rocks and things like that. But if you go exploring, you may find interesting things. Very interesting things. For instance, perhaps a shipping container. 
I'm probably going to run out of air, so let's uh, come back up first. So, you can kind of see things down there from the surface, but not very well. When you get under there, you see it though. You can come in here and... Hello, what's this? It's a, it's a baby doll model. And you can use them, and they pick up. There may be more cursed dolls, indeed. Now, something I could have done better here is um, some kind of prompt that you can pick these things up. As it is, they just kind of stand there floating in midair. Um, and maybe players used them, maybe they didn't. Maybe they found them and just thought, huh, that's a cool Easter egg, and then moved on, not realize, realizing you could actually pick them up. So uh, there was actually meant to be an ambient sound with all of them, kind of like a low rumble that would disappear when you pick them up as well. Uh, yeah, I'd actually kind of be interested to hear of the players that did find them. Was it kind of obvious whether you should pick them up or not? Or use them, should I say? Now, of course, we get here. I'll talk more about the water bits as we go around the map, but uh, I think I've talked enough about water for now. So I wanted to give the player a goal very, very early because it's very easy to get lost in kind of open maps like this. Um, it's very easy for players to kind of not find a goal early on and kind of wonder, well, what am I supposed to do here? It's actually kind of an issue with starting the player here is that if they turn this way first and see the ladder there, they'll go down and go this way. They'll end up going around the entire map like this and uh, not finding much for them. Unless, of course, they start looking under the water. But yeah, hopefully I was counting on the fact that they would look this way and spot this thing, which is kind of an obvious piece of visual interest. And you've got things like the, the other combine building up there as well. So I was kind of counting on the fact that they'd notice this and want to explore this. I think it holds the most visual interest in this opening scene here. And in doing so, hopefully they'll come this way and notice a couple of other things here. The combine door being uh, the principal thing. And these windows, which you can look through and spot the combine force field. Now, I do this a lot in the map. I let players look into an area that they can't get to yet. Again, I, th I think it just really helps the, the feeling of exploration and progress as they're going around the map. So you can see into parts that you can't reach yet, and uh, as you open doors and open up areas, there's this feeling of progress, which is very important, I feel. So, the player can jump along here. Incidentally, this platform here used to be half the width, and it was really awkward to navigate around, so I, I doubled its uh, width there, which really helped. And of course you've got the uh, hole in the wall here. This is just for quick access back down into the door once you've uh, once you've opened it using the panel in there. But it's also another piece of visual interest that players will get attracted to, hopefully. So we come up here. Incidentally, this model here has uh, no collision for this bit here, so I just had to, had to add some clip brushes so that the player didn't just walk through it. It's got around here somewhere there's a collision but yeah had to bodge that one a bit <laughs> and then the arrow here this is just to make make players feel like they are going the right way because again it's a very open area there's lots of different ways you can go so it's just another piece of a little piece of visual reinforcement to say congratulations you're on the right track oh excuse me I suddenly got hiccups in the middle of my commentary god damn it <laughs> And then when you get here, again, the lambda sign is uh, very apparent in the environment here. And that's just an obvious sign of, hey, you should try and go up here. Just really trying to give the player a goal of what to do. Uh, originally, the lambda sign was here. Kind of signifying the end goal of the player doing this uh, navigation puzzle. But that doesn't really work because players aren't going to see it until they're like right here. In which case, it's already served its purpose. It's not needed anymore. So, I can pick up a pistol here. I don't really like this. Again, it's just kind of weapons laying around in the environment. You don't really need a pistol right now. The issue was that I really wanted to make sure the player had a weapon. 
I really wanted to make sure they found some weapons before they got to the actual ambush, so I ended up just kind of placing them in the player's way at various locations, making them really hard to miss. It's still possible, but yeah. Incidentally, I'm really happy with the way the sunset w turned out. This was a very happy accident, of which there are several in this map. Uh, the sunset with the lens flare just works at so many different angles in this map. It was a complete accident. I just kind of put this skybox in and, you know, the sun just happened to be over there. <laughs> but yeah, it worked out great. I'm very happy with that. Hey, moving on. Here's another area where you can look through into a uh, another section of the map. And there's some supplies on the other side. This is kind of cool because the player notices the supplies here and kind of makes a mental note of this area. So they'll look for it later on to find these supplies. This area looks kind of important, so... That's the reasoning there. And the combine light kind of is this giant landmark in these corridors, so you can kind of find your way around. There's a couple of areas like this where you can just kind of head in and see what's up. Pick up some rockets. Actually, the whole picking up rockets before the launch of things is another thing I really didn't like about this map. But it was just a case of... I wanted the rockets to be hidden around the level so players felt like they could go around while fighting the gunship. They didn't have to stand near the uh, rocket crate, which is over there, actually. But yeah, it had the unfortunate side effect of players picking up rockets before they even knew there was going to be a rocket launcher or, you know, some kind of gunship, which is kind of hinted at when they when you start picking up rockets. So yeah, wasn't the biggest fan of that. But it's just it was more a time thing more than anything, just... I need the players to pick up rockets. So yeah, we're just going to have to add them. If I had more time, what I would have done is uh, have lots of areas like this with bars across that are actually barred that the player couldn't get to. And uh, when the player activates the ambush, they would activate some other lever or something that opens all the prison doors in the map, which would give players access to more supplies of various types. You could hide all, co all kinds of stuff in there that you didn't want the players to get on their way up. That would have been a great way of doing it, but... Again, time. This is another thing I don't like, but time caused me to just uh, just kind of deal with it. Is uh, an unopenable door. Again, I feel like I'm breaking my own rules here, kind of telling people the, not to break the visual language of Half-Life 2. And yeah, this is uh, this happens quite a lot in this map due to time limits. So yeah, this is closed at first, obviously, because I don't want players to get into this area as they could just bypass the uh, the um, force field puzzle completely which would be no good so this door actually gets blown off its hinges when the ambush starts which gives the player and the combine a route to get down here quickly originally there was going to be some some kind of bars on the back of it which uh, would, which would explain why it wouldn't open from this side but you can actually you know unbar it from the other side but uh the implementation had a lot of issues and I didn't have time to fix it so I just went with this as it's uh, it's clean, it works, although it's not particularly good from a game design perspective. So as we're here let's drop down into this little uh, little passage here. As you can see there's a, a slight glow underneath us, what could it be? It's another cursed doll, there may be more indeed. And as you can see here under here as well, there's a, a slight blue light. I think I ended up placing just four Omnis at the side of each side of the map, just to get some light under the water. Wow, this looked ugly with all the sunlight coming down here. Oh, very bad. don't really like the cutoff here, though. I think it looks really unnatural and ugly. I wish there, was, there could be like a proper fade for it, but the light blocking entity just kind of... <laughs> just blocks everything after after it, so yeah. Alright, so let's progress up here. This jumping this jumping puzzle actually ended up being very, very easy. I uh I expected players to have to jump a lot, but you can actually just kind of walk around it like this. <laughs> Which is quite funny. I suppose it's good in a way, because uh jumping puzzles can be really, really annoying if they're difficult, so uh luckily this isn't. This is about the hardest jump you're going to have to do, actually. 
Uh, I had to place a clip brush here actually because it was possible to jump from this onto the uh, onto the railing there and completely skip the rest of the puzzle here. So that's actually the reason why I added these kind of uh, what do you call these. I want to say pulley, but that's not the word I'm looking for. These kind of supports. I think it really helps reinforce the fact that this structure is tied onto the side of the wall. It's kind of a load-bearing structure here. I think it looks really cool. But yeah, that's that's also why they're there to kind of reinforce that the player can't jump over there. All right, let's do this jump. It'd be really embarrassing if I fell, but no, we're good. And then, um, of course, this is why the fences are here as well because the player don't want the player to just jump down onto that railing from here. Originally I had a plan there was going to be a door here because this this whole uh, area here doesn't make much sense there's no way to actually get here kind of naturally there, there was originally going to be doors here that the player could walk through but never got around to it and we just got a wooden structure here again this is just building brushes to mimic the uh, details in the texture it's really easy to do simple but very very effective so I think these brushes are all just kind of, I think it's eight width each, might be four, but I think it's eight. And you just, you know, cut each one down and change the elongation on each side and then just funk detail it all. Simple but effective brushwork. Originally I wanted to add kind of a, as you're walking along here, it's like some creaks and groans and perhaps a, a couple of the wooden bits actually snap underneath your weight. That would have been really nice, but again, it's another time constraint. I never got around to. I was going to put some uh, supplies here that players could find because it just feels like coming around here there's absolutely no point so I was just going to put like, I was going to put a rocket there or something but wouldn't make much sense at this point. This area needed a little bit more love uh, visually. Uh, there was, I was going to turn all this into like displacements for like a broken roof and all kinds of rubble debris here but just never got around to it in time so it's a little bit sparse in terms of detail here. I've got a little push one way which leads us to this area. Again you can, you can obviously see the combine influence here with the, like this kind of spiky wall panels which is classic combine style. So a couple more here as well. I really like the way this area turned out. I think it looks really cool. I'm not too sure about this prop here though. It's really not meant to be interacted with by players. As you can see. <laughs> looks a bit bizarre. and You can't really do anything to these people. The idea with having these here was I just wanted to show that this place was inhabited by something. There's definitely a combine presence here, but they're just kind of not awake right now. I think it's just really creepy to have these people here like this. But I think if I had more time, I would have created an enclosure for them so the player couldn't run up to them and interact directly because it's a bit, just feels a bit weird. And again, we've got another combine door. This originally wasn't here. The player could just walk straight through to uh, this area. That didn't work originally because there was no door here. So the player could just, again, completely bypass the uh, shield puzzle, which is why I had to add a door here, which was locked initially. Yeah, there was a lot of going back and fixing the layout retroactively when I added new puzzle elements. So this was kind of, a lot of this level was just kind of winging it, really. I got very lucky with the way things worked out in the end, I think. Because there was very little planning that went into it. If I'm honest. Again here the cube maps look fantastic. As you come into the uh, structure. Loving that. Now we get to this area. This area went through a lot of changes. Uh, originally the console was on this side. There was no window here. Uh, which had a couple of problems. You would hit this button. You would hear the door open but you had no idea what door opened. Where it was what this button was connected to, etc, etc. So this area went through a lot of revisions, so originally I just moved the console over to this side. 
and uh, added the wires of course so you can kind of see the wires going to the door there that wasn't really enough even I didn't really notice the wires I mean they're there but you don't really pick up on them that much so I added the window moved the console to this side so you can actually see the door when you press the button which is really important I hate it when I hit a button in a level and I have absolutely no idea what it does it's really frustrating uh, the issue is that players generally look down at the button like this to press it and the door is kind of in your peripheral vision there which is why I added this little cut down here originally the window was just straight across like this you couldn't see the door at all in your peripheral vision so the extra cut there helps although it's not perfect I think the button would have just been better higher up and kind of perhaps over here somewhere so you'd kind of be like this when you pressed it you'd see the door let's do that There you go. And a couple of second after a couple of seconds delay of hitting the button, you notice the uh, the light here turns red as well. It's also a really important bit of visual feedback that you've actually pressed the button and it has been activated along with the sounds and everything. So this guy activates. This is the first um, kind of clue, I guess, that the player has that he's being watched. Uh, I wanted to include a couple of things like this around the map to feel like I wanted to put the player on edge a little, like. So they obviously know I'm here, are they going to do anything about this? I don't know. But I just wanted to kind of leave it at that for now, I don't want to have anything like crazy happen that, that would kind of really give the game away. So right now you're just kind of being watched by this camera. It's just really eerie. Then of course you've got the combine lookout device here. Um, this is kind of going on to the actual start of the ambush where you, you actually use one of these to start the ambush. So the original plan was to have a couple of these all around the map, kind of looking out over the ocean, and the player could use each one and get a nice view. And that was going to be like a, a vista reward for using these things. So that when the player would get to the ambush point and use that one, and the gunship appears, it's kind of a shock, you know. Weren't quite expecting something bad to happen. But yeah, never got around to triggering them all up, so this, you can't use this, it's just kind of there. Alright, so let's continue. Hitting that button also opens this door here as well. I would have liked to put some more visuals in showing that this door had opened as well, but... Again, as, as I was saying, this door is kind of a last minute thing that uh, I had to add to not break the layout. And again, the player gets a nice view of this area here, just, just to remind them that this area exists and that they can get into it now through the door. You can't actually open this. That is by design. This door actually gets completely deleted when the ambush starts to again give the player and the combine more routes to run around. But right now we don't want the player to get through there, so that is locked. So the player can just fall down here and bam. So again, there's a little more stuff going on in this room that shows the player they're still being watched. You've got another camera up there. You've got the uh, warning on the combine monitor here. So, if players are paying attention, they kind of realise that they are being watched and that something probably bad is going to happen. You can search all the lockers and get some ammo. I think there's some rockets strewn around this room as well. So, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this room took a long time to get right, and another happy accident in this room is that if you look up through the uh, skylight here, you actually see the tower in the distance. Um, this was something I'd love to do a lot more in this map, which is kind of highlighting the tower as kind of your final destination. I mean, hopefully players saw it and really wanted to get up there. That's kind of the whole point of having this huge thing dominating the skyline. That's why I put the radio tower on the top there, this just huge antenna just to really grab players' attention. Hopefully it worked. But yeah, I was quite happy when I played this area and noticed that the player can see the... Uh, see the tower from down here. That's really cool. So yeah, this area took a long time to get right. Originally I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with this area. But then I thought I'd just carry on the exploration theme by adding these uh, laser beams going into the door here. 
player would have to work out where these beams went to and how to turn them off in order to deactivate the force field. It's a bit of a leap though, now that I think about it, some people were saying that they, they weren't sure what the beams were for and they, they didn't really understand that the beams went into the force field and were powering it. And I can kind of understand that now looking at it, I mean, they are beams going into the force field but I think uh, I could have done a better job showing that they were actually powering it. Like perhaps have uh, some kind of combined power generators up here or something. Could have done use some more models to kind of show that that was the case. Again, I just kind of added these beams very, very quickly as I was kind of rushing to get the gameplay in at the end of the map. It was a bit of a rush job, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay, so the idea here was get the player to notice the beams and then just let them go off exploring to find out where these beams go, where the consoles are. So the beams give you a little bit of direction. You can f you can try and work out where they are, follow them directly, or you can just kind of explore around and find them naturally. But this door stays locked until the very end. Now, this is where the player sees the airboat. And uh, unless they came around the front here at the very start of the map, in which case they probably saw it then as well. But I, I put the spotlight over it like this to kind of direct some attention to it. The real problem here is that this uh, wall should have been cut down kind of here and then across and then up again I think just so the player can actually see the airboat from back here I mean even like this you can barely see it, you have to kind of jump which is a bit of an oversight, I should have made it a lot easier to be seen but that gives the player an end goal like I want that airboat, I wonder how I get in there and you've got the red light there which signifies that things are closed or locked and then you've got this door here, which is obviously unusable right now. So, uh, in a lot of areas in this map, you kind of re-emerge into an outside area. This was very, very deliberate, as I wanted to use this vista as much as possible, because it looks fantastic, so... Get a lot of usage out of it. Let's get in here. So you can find some more supplies around here. Actually, there's nothing in that one. Huh. There's lots of health hidden around the maps. Um, I got a lot of comments that the map was very, very difficult once the ambush was triggered. There's a lot of combine all over the place. That's true. This is one of those things where you never want to playtest your own level for difficulty <laughs> because you know where everything is and you you cannot be objective about difficulty when you know exactly how everything works. So uh, I probably should have made these health packs a little bit less well hidden. There's plenty of health around, you just need to know where to look to find it. A lot of them are hung up behind platforms like this. So we've got another SMG in that thing. Again, putting stuff in the player's way, they just need to look for it and find it. Again here, using the vista, looking out. I don't really like this model though. I think it looks a bit ugly. I just wanted to have bars across it, like that. But This was the only model that I could get to fit. <laughs> Common theme in Half-Life 2 mapping. So I've got some displacements here. The trouble with using displacements for stuff like this is that you get the Fong shading on them and it looks quite unnatural like this. I really wish there was an option to turn that off, like in perhaps in the shader you use. Yeah, not much I can do about that. So we've just got some basic uh, obstacle removal here. This was another happy accident. You, you open the door here and it just pushes the barrel out a little bit. I think that's, that's just a nice, neat little touch that I quite liked. I was going to move the barrel, but I decided against it. Got some more health here. I think this room is a little cramped, though. There's uh, not really enough room between the door and all the pillars and everything. It's a little bit awkward to navigate around. Perhaps it could have been fixed with a little bit of clipping here and there. But again, that was a time issue I just didn't have time for. And again here, if players look down they can see the airboat. Another very deliberate thing there. I even put the pipe here to kind of... Players want to see where the pipe goes perhaps and it draws their eye down into this room. 
don't know if it worked, but I just put a lot of things there to try and uh, show players where stuff was. And I like this console because you hit the button and you see you can see the force field there. And of course the beam turns off. What I would have really liked to do here that I just didn't think about until uh, it was too late was actually have the force field flicker when the beam turns off. I think that would have been a really, really nice piece of uh, uh, visuals to actually explain to the player what the beams do, that they are powering the force field. So yeah, that would have been a great way to kind of really sell that idea to players. Of course, if they were looking at it, that's the, the crux of the whole thing. So that's the first one done. So I've got a flickering light here. Originally, this was the only light in this area, and when it flickers on and off, it was actually very hard to look at, because it, it went from very light to very, very dark. It was quite painful on the eyes, so I added an extra light here, just so there's always a constant bit of light in this area. Incidentally, I really like the roof details here, just to it helps break up the silhouette of just these boring brushes. There's a couple of props here as well, but just simple things like that can really help make the map look a lot more detailed than it actually is. Alright, let me exit onto the roof. And again, coming out of this door, you can see the beam immediately. I want to say that was by design, but that was just another happy accident. It kind of so if players don't want to explore, they can just go straight to the objective if they like. But if you do explore, you will find things. Uh, you won't find things over here though, because I never actually finished this. I was going to put rubble around this so you can actually get in under this. It's probably a bit buggy because there's no clipping or anything here. So Don't go in there, you might get stuck. <laughs> but you can hop over this. Uh, originally this was going to be a bigger theme the level, like this giant combine arm kind of gripping onto the building here. I was going to make it kind of go inside as well and have uh, lots of conduits running through. But uh, yeah, the clock said no at the end of the day. But you can jump through here, grab a shotgun and some grenades and other things. If you don't jump up the side here, you can just walk all the way around and come through the door. That is another perfectly valid option. And uh, players on the lookout will notice there's a rocket up here as well. So you can jump up like this and uh, grab it. Nothing else up here though. In fact, this area is a little bit unfinished. You've got this brush here, which, uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't know what that's for. <laughs> uh, originally, I was going to clip this off or change it so players couldn't climb up, but I actually quite liked it. You can come up here. In the final ambush, you can run up here and finish off the combine on the roof here. Run up to the uh, landing pad if you so desire, although there's absolutely no reason to. It's Why not let the player come up there? It's no harm done. Again, it goes back to the whole not putting artificial blocks in, so... Would have been nice to put something up there that the player could find, perhaps some more crates or something. So this skylight wasn't here. Originally this corridor was really, really dark. That's the corridor on the way to the uh, lift to go up the tower. So I decided to add it in the skylight here. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And another really happy accident with this is that on your way back down here, after you've triggered the ambush, there's the possibility of a combine soldier spawning up here and you can, you can actually throw grenades down through the grate to you, which I thought was an absolutely excellent and a completely uh, unexpected. But very happy with the way that turned out too. So rocket crate. Again, completely obvious that you're going to be fighting a gunship or helicopter of some kind. But you've got to have one on the level somewhere because if a player runs out of standard rockets, then uh, he's going to be a bit screwed. And considering the ending of the level is tied to the gunship being killed, you kind of have to make sure the player can actually kill it. <laughs> so, let's follow the thing. Beam in here. This area was a complete rush job. It's super boxy, there's barely any detail at all in here. I added these uh, these head crab pods very, very quickly as kind of a final thing just to spruce this area up a little because it's just super boring otherwise. But yeah, I just really couldn't think of anything to add in here, so uh, 
just tried to break the area up, up a bit with these uh, bars. But yeah, not very happy with it. It's very boxy and boring. So that's the other beam disabled. Let's go back. Oh yeah, <laughs> I completely forgot about this. So when you turn off the uh, console, a trigger activates here. When you walk past it, this uh, pod opens. Incidentally, I do like the lighting here from the combine light. I think it casts some nice shadows on the wall from the, uh, the crab pods. So I was quite happy with that, but generally I really dislike a lot of the brushwork out here. I think it looks uh, not very good, very boxy. Okay, so that's the force field disabled. And again, the player has a lot of choice about how they want to get back down to the force field, so the observant player can just jump back down here if they understand where they are on the map. Or you can just walk back down the steps the way you came. Completely up to you. Or you can just go and jump off the side somewhere and have another explore around. Let's just go this way. And we can get through here now. Charge up. Originally these charges weren't even here, and even I found the map to be quite hard with all the combine attacking you. So I added these here as a, a safety, a difficulty safety net, shall we say. So I wouldn't get too crazy on players. Now another funny thing that testers found was originally this grate was not in the window, it was kind of off to the side here. It kind of like had fallen out or had been pushed out by someone or something. So can, there's actually a hole here that you could drop back down into this area from. Uh, I think it was I think it was Necky, one of my testers. He just stacked a whole bunch of barrels and crates under this thing and jumped up here and completely bypassed the uh, the uh, shield wall puzzle. <laughs> While I thought that was very inventive, I didn't really want that to happen. So uh, yeah, put the grate back where it should be. What rockets? And this is where the player could see earlier. They can now get there and pick up all the supplies. Now a lot of these um, supply packs are actually meant to be hidden, but uh, because of the glowing nature of the Planet Philip sprites, it actually reveals a lot of them, which uh not really too keen on. I hope he removes the glow for the next uh, competition packs. Actually, in a lot of the maps, there were kind of hidden supplies that were just glowing in the dark corner they were in because of that, so I hopefully he changes that. So here we are, again the skylight. I think it was Neki, my tester, commented again that there should have been a vent behind this. And uh, I kind of agree, it's a great place to hide a vent behind a, uh, a pallet like this. What I was thinking is that it could have been a go into the this area here which the player can't actually get to. Just have some extra supplies there. But yeah, if I could wind back time, I would do that. So here we are, the lift. Now this area... Originally had grand plans for this area, uh, a couple of which still remain. So you probably noticed this thing here, without its cog in it. And uh, this probably confused players as well, seeing this model here, because it has quite a few connotations as to its use in Half-Life games. So again, I apologise for breaking the visual language of Half-Life 2 something I know I keep moaning about. But the original plan was that you come in here, try and use the lift, and it wouldn't function. You get like a spluttering sound or, you know, some kind of error sound. And then you'd have to find a way to power up the lift, which of course would involve grabbing a cog and placing it here to get the power working for it. Now the original plan for this was to have a staircase kind of going down here or something, which would take you into a catacombs kind of area which would be kind of at sea level, or just below, shall we say, about a foot below sea level, to be wading around in these kind of dark, watery passages, trying to find the generator room and uh, turning on the generator, or should I say finding the cog to uh, place here to turn on the generator. But of course, due to time, that never happened, and uh, I don't know why I didn't just hit the delete button on this, I guess it was just complete oversight on my part. So yeah, the lift just works. <laughs> and again, you've got some more health kits strewn around here as well. There's another one hidden back here. You've got a little supply room here. 
which has a rocket in it for players that explore around. And you've got another outside area here. Now this thing gave me a lot of trouble. Originally this was just padlocked and you could shoot the padlock and the ladder would come down. Now I had to change this to a button for obvious reasons as players on starting the map could just come around here with the pistol and uh, shoot this down and completely ignore half the map by doing so. So now it's just a button to activate that. And the reason I wanted to do this is because again I wanted players to explore the water and uh, if players are up here and they jump down and there's no way back up they're, they're not going to jump, they're just not. So I wanted to add a shortcut back here but one that was obviously one way so the player would have to come up here first to activate it. And speaking of exploring the water, let's go and find the final doll shall we? So this is a fair a fairly decent landmark in the water, so let's go and have a look over there. This, I think this doll stands out. This is probably the one that players found the easiest, perhaps, as it's kind of, kind of see it even below the water. There we go, we found all the cursed dolls. And I wish I could tell you that something awesome happened in the map when you found them all, like a secret area opens or some script triggers that does something special. Unfortunately, no. You just find the dolls and that's it. <laughs> because I just didn't have time to add anything special. Which really, really sucks. Uh, some people commented that it would have been great to open up a couple of the barred rooms and have supplies in there that only uh, activate when you find all the dolls. That's a great idea. Sounds fantastic, but I didn't think of it and I wouldn't have had time to implement it anyway, so yeah, that sucks. Alright, let's go up the lift. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this lift other than it does have problems, i.e. don't stand here when you activate it because this thing will come down and you'll break it. <laughs> There's another issue as well, that if you somehow manage to press the button here and then run out of the lift, there's actual, actually no buttons to uh, call it back. The same goes for the top as well, there's only this button inside the lift, so you can actually break the map in a, a very serious way, just due to the oversight of not having buttons on the outside of the lift as well. <laughs> yeah, huge oversight by me, I guess I was just kind of rushing at this point trying to get everything finished, and this lift gave me so much trouble to get right. Anyone who watched the live stream will uh, attest to that. <laughs> Which brings us to the top of the tower. Now one thing that's plainly obvious from this is that the uh, the edges of the map are very plainly visible. Which is something I absolutely hate, but... It's a tricky, it's a tricky thing actually, because you've only got water to the horizon. I really didn't want to add anything like cliffs in the distance or anything like that. I really didn't want to give players any um, kind of impetus to try and swim out there because there's actually a watery death trigger around the edge. I didn't just want players to die instantly as soon as they started the map just by trying to swim out there. Maybe some people tried, hopefully the watery death trigger didn't get them. <laughs> but yeah, the, the edges of the map are plainly visible which looks really ugly. Something I would love to uh, have fixed but again just didn't have time. And again, you get the issue here of, this is the trouble with 2D skyboxes, is that you get this uh, dead space between the horizon and where the water actually leads to. It's like, what is this here? <laughs> Doesn't work too well, I think. But hey, just look up and everything's fine. <laughs> Incidentally, I really like these combined panels here and the, the way this kind of uh, pipework here kind of sticks out and then goes into the wall there. I really like that. The original plan was to add that all around the side here as well, but I just kind of ran out of time, so slap a decal on the side, make it look interesting. <laughs> now we get to the final lamp, the ambush room. So we've got the god light shining on the rocket launcher. Again, I really would have liked to introduce the rocket launcher in a much better way. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to really make sure players picked it up, so... It's fairly hard to miss. There's not much else in this room which gets your attention. Apart from this thing. Hmm, a flashing button. 
nothing bad can happen here, right? <laughs> you see, there's a couple of glass panels and things in the in here. But I think it just looks really cool when the gunship strafes the windows here and you get lots of bullet holes appearing in them. It looks really, really cool, so that's why I did that. Lots of various roof tiles here. The idea of these roof tiles is they're actually um, attached with pivots, so they kind of fly around. It doesn't really work too well, but the idea was that um, the updraft from the gunship would kind of make these kind of, you know, fly around all over the place and scatter them everywhere and it would look really cool, but it doesn't really work at all. I think it, uh, the updraft must get blocked by the brushes around here, I guess. So yeah, that plan didn't quite work out. Alright, so let's trigger this thing. So the player looks through, and then the ambush happens. Funny, funny things, you can actually see the gunship's like tail as you look through the, uh, the magnifier, which is quite funny. I wonder how many people noticed that. So this gunship... I basically had to learn gunships 101 all over again. It's been so long since I've placed one in a map and actually built piles for it. So I was kind of learning on the fly, which is something you really want to avoid in a in a timed mapping competition. And it took me a long, long time to get this stuff right, get all the pathing correct. There are still a couple of edge cases where the he'll get stuck in geometry, like especially like around the water tower here and in the combine lookout post down there, you can sometimes get stuck on the walls, which is a real shame. Wish I had more time to kind of bug fix that. But I'm quite happy with the um, the actual fight in the tower up here. I think that works really nicely. I think the intro of the gunship is a really cool idea. It just perhaps needed polishing up a little bit. So the player has three rockets maximum when they're up here. Obviously that's not enough to kill a gunship. And I'd, I very, very purposely didn't add any other rocket ammo up here. So the player would have to descend again to actually kill the gunship. It's very much by design. Let's go back down. But I've got to say, having the huge adrenaline moment of finding this gunship and then kind of waiting for 20 so seconds in this lift to go down, it's a bit of an anti-climax. So perhaps it uh, wasn't the best design. <laughs> and then we get the combine ambush as well, once you're down here. Yes, I have god mode on, so this should be very easy. <laughs> so this combine squad carries a couple of different weapons. And again, I just wanted to give the player a variety of weapons for fighting the combine. So. Whatever your playstyle, you should be comfortable because there's an AR2, an SMG, and a shotgun with all of these guys. So uh, hopefully you found something you like to fight with. And these guys, as soon as they spawn in, they're told where the player is in the map, which is why they assault you straight away. These are the only Combine soldiers that do this in the map, but I really wanted to give the impression that the Combine were really after you. They weren't just kind of waiting around for you to come back through the map. So these guys are set to be super aggress aggressive. Whereas the rest of the combine in the map are more defensive in nature. So as you travel down the lift, you there's a trigger hidden in the lift which changes the gunship's path. Uh, it'll actually change it to the upper path when you're going up and change it to the uh, medium level path as you're coming down. There are three paths in the map total and it changes depending on the elevation you are above the water. I thought that was the best way of doing it. It's kind of a catch-all. Although really to fix all the bugs I would have needed to have a separate path for kind of each side, I guess, and have that trigger when you walk in and out of these areas. But for the most part, it works just fine. Let's hit him with that. I mean, generally, the gunship's fairly good in this map. He'll give you a good fight. Incidentally, something I added, which I don't think anyone really noticed, because it's, it feels really, really unnatural. I don't know why I did it. I'll just wait for him to come back. Originally the gunship was set to Omniscent, which means that he always knows where you are, but I, turn I ended up turning that off. So I thought it was quite cool to kind of outmaneuver him and run around the place. There he comes. So if I jump in the water...
Yeah, okay, still a tanker. I was getting really worried then. I thought I'd set the trigger too high, but if you actually go under the water... See, he's firing at me now. If I go under the water, he'll actually stop shooting. This is because I wanted the player to... If they went into the water, it's kind of instant death when the gunship's active. So when the player dips down below the water about a foot or so, he actually hits a trigger, which sets the gunship to a neutral AI relationship. And then it's a on-touching trigger, so when the player stops touching it, it reverts back to hostile. I think this... I mean, this is completely unnatural behaviour, really, for the gunship, but I just felt like if the player accidentally falls off into the water while the gunship is chasing them, you know, it's going to be instant death, basically. So I wanted to have a mechanic in there which might alleviate that. But no one really commented on it. I don't think anyone really noticed it, so I think it's a bit of a failure. Although it's an interesting concept, I think. It probably just needs to be explained, actually explained to the player that that is actually a thing that can happen. Alright, so let's continue here. Is the combine up here? Please. Damn it. So I should probably explain this now. So all the combine in this map that spawn after the initial rush are random spawns. There's about 15 to 20 different spawn points around the map. And there is a... A uh, NPC maker, which will spawn in, I think there's a maximum of five combine active at any one time, and I think a maximum of, uh, I think it's eight or ten, perhaps, will spawn in the map. So, the fight with the combine should be different every time you play. That's the idea, at least, anyway. Uh, there are a couple of bugs with this. I've heard reports of players seeing combine appear from thin air directly in front of them. I think that's because I probably set the uh, NPC maker to not spawn in the player's field of view. Uh, sorry, yeah. So that's probably what that is. That's just a complete oversight on my part. So apologies if you saw Combine appear right in front of you. That's very, very bad on my part and I apologise. The other interesting thing is that these Combine fortifications appear in the map as well. I really wanted to make it feel like the map had changed when the player came back down. Not only is there combine everywhere, but they've actually set up fortifications to try and combat you. Uh, I think this is a great way of doing that, by adding things like this. This was a real pain to get right, though. Um, I had to turn off the collision for these models and add in a funk brush, textured in invisible texture, and make that solid. So there's actually just a box collision here, it's not actually using the model's collision. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, apologies. This is what happens when you do it live. <laughs> so yeah, um, I also came across a strange glitch where uh, if you had a prop dynamic that was set to non-solid and then you set it to solid via a trigger, the player can actually get stuck to it and be unable to move. You get some kind of strange uh, collision error in the console. That took a while to work out what was happening and how to fix it, so that's why I ended up using the uh, collision brushes. So yeah, again, all these spawns from now on are completely random. Now these combine do share a squad. So as soon as one sees you, they all know where you are, which is why they're all attacking me now. But it starts out that none of them actually know where you are until they spot you. Which is completely by design. And because all the routes in the map are now open, so all these doors I was talking about earlier that were closed, see this door has disappeared so you can travel through here now. I really should have opened up this door as well, like have it blown off its hinges or something, because that would have been a gr another extra route for players and combine to explore around. That would have been cool. But yeah, there's lots of new routes open now. Again, you've got more combine barricades here as well. Shame there's actually no combine around to use them. And I don't think I actually added any cover hints to the combine soldiers, so they probably don't use them too well anyway. It's another oversight. I love the way you feel like you're being hunted by the gunship here. You kind of you, you catch a glimpse of it flying by a window or a door every now and then. You can always hear it flying around. I think it's really ominous. That's why I turned off the Omnisense, because it just feels so good having it hunt you like this, flying around on its path. I think it works really well.
Okay, so let's go up here, find some more rockets. Okay, I've got two rockets. Get a couple of combined snipers that can appear up on roofs. And as I came up the stairs here, I triggered the gunship to go to its medium height path. If I walk back down the stairs, it'll start patrolling around the bottom of the map again. So we're, at the, we're on the medium path now, which is kind of around the uh, water tower in the centre here. Originally I had some very, very aggressive pathing set up where it would come in really, really low over here. I just think that looks completely awesome when the gunship just kind of flies directly over you. You get this huge rotor wash in your face. I think that's amazing. And I really try and aim for that. But unfortunately it can cause a lot of horrible glitches and like gunships being caught in geometry. I had him crashing into this thing all the time. I had him crashing into this all the time as well. So as soon as the gunship is destroyed, you can hear that alarm going off, which is designed to get players' attention that they can now enter the uh, the uh, airboat room. Originally, this was something that all of my beta testers, testers got stuck on. Once the gunship was destroyed, they had no idea where to go. They'd completely forgotten about the gunship at this point. So I really want to add something to the map, which would get, get them to remember, or at least go towards this new sound that they don't understand. It's kind of a, an interesting thing for them. So again, this is the other door that gets blown off using a uh, fizz, fizz explosion, I believe, if I remember correctly. So let's go and investigate this sound. There's also a squad of Combine Elite that spawn in this room. There's only three of them, but they can be quite nasty, as the player's usually fairly low on health by this point. I wonder if there's any combine out here, no. I put a spawn point up in that thing as well, so he's got a long way to run to get to the player. <laughs> so you notice here the lighting changes. So you've got the alarm sound, you've also got the flickering lights and the red light. So it really helps to draw players' attention to this area. And we can now escape. So we can hit this button. Which opens up the door. And then we can get in the airboat and ride it out to escape. Now, the only problem with this, and this is something I got a couple of messages about, which is uh, hilarious and depressing at the same time, is that a lot of players felt they really wanted to explore the boundaries of the map once they got into the airboat. And they just drove out into the horizon and ended up getting killed by the watery death <laughs> before the map faded which really sucks i hate that so much like you've just completed the, completed the map you go out home free and you get killed by a death trigger Ugh. that was just a massive oversight by me i should have killed off all the watery death triggers when the player opens these gates or when the player gets in the airboat really should have done that But yeah, didn't. So that was another oversight. Let's jump in here, shall we? Originally there was going to be another secret in here, with like a, perhaps another doll or something, but I ended up just deciding against that in the end. Right. So yeah, players would just go out here and die instantly. The um. The boys here signify the playable area. Perhaps it's not as uh, obvious as I would want. And we escaped the sea fort. So that was lost at sea. Another thing I didn't really talk about, which I should have done, was the optimization. Um, it was very much kind of a last minute thing. The map really isn't designed to be optimized very well, unfortunately. There's um. You can basically see through the structure at a lot of different points, which makes visibility culling extremely difficult. Um, I added in hint rushes where I could. Uh, I did a lot of prop fading distances to really help with performance, but a lot of people still did mention that I had frame rate drops in areas, which I was kind of anticipating, but just really didn't have time to fix. It was 
kind of fundamentally broken at a layout level. There's just too many windows and doors in the map, kind of seeing into other areas. It made visibility culling extremely difficult. Unfortunately, I just didn't have the time to go through and fix it all up. So yeah, lesson learned. This was a really interesting map for me. It's amazing how much I got done in a week, actually. It's very, very motivating to uh, set yourself a goal of, you know, 10 days and absolutely on the 10th day you have to be finished. It really helped me uh, finish the map. And I learned a hell of a lot doing it too. A lot of mistakes were made, which I learned from. No auto saves. Oh man, I'm going to kill myself for that over and over and over. <laughs> it's another thing I really lay into people about. And what do I do? I can forget it completely. It's a very, very valid criticism of the level. A few people died and uh, went straight back to the beginning and then just quit. I don't blame them for it one bit. <laughs> Alright, so hopefully you found this level not this level, but this video interesting. Uh, hopefully I didn't babble on too much. Again, I was doing it live, so uh, hopefully it's comprehensible in some way. And we'll carry on with Ambushville very, very soon. I'll see you next time.